Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. It's been an absolutely gorgeous day here in Sirencester. It's been blue skies, haven't seen a single cloud all day long, and it's supposed to stay that way tonight. All of the apps agree, all of the weather forecasts agree, which is really rare. There's gonna be a crystal clear night all night long. There's not much of a moon as well, and that moon sets around 12, half 12 tonight, so it should be a perfect night for astrophotography. So tonight I'm gonna to be in the garden and I'm gonna be photographing the whale galaxy. Okay, so my target for tonight is going to be the Whale Galaxy, or NGC 4631, I believe. Now, this is a barred spiral galaxy, and it's a bit of a distorted edge-on galaxy, so it resembles a, a, a blue whale from the top, which is how it gets its nickname. It's quite a faint target, so it's not the easiest to photograph, so this is really going to test out the um, ASI 2600 MC Pro. Um, but hopefully I can do a good job. In the centre of the galaxy you get the core and it's quite um, bright, it's quite yellow and then as it gets to the edges, which are quite thin because it's an edge-on galaxy, um, it starts to turn more blue or purple. Now it also has the hockey stick galaxy which is right next door to it. Um, that's even fainter and looks like a like a hockey stick, hence the name. Um, so I'll try and fit that in frame. I think I shouldn't have any issue fitting that in frame at a thousand millimeters. Um, but yeah, that, those are my two targets tonight. Now all I need to do is set up the telescope and wait for it to get dark. Okay, so just while it was getting dark, I thought I'd take a quick video of the moon. Now I decided to do this because one of my goals this year is to do some planetary photography when they become visible again in the night sky. And to do that, you need to take videos and then take the individual frames from the videos um, and stack them. So I thought I'd give it a go on the moon. I was looking up and it's a beautiful crescent moon tonight. I think it's about a 20% crescent moon and it just looked great just before it was getting dark. Um, I couldn't photograph any, any deep space stuff, so I thought I'd give it a quick go. Um, so I pointed towards the moon. I took two one minute videos of the moon, um, tried to frame it. I don't think I framed it too well. It's quite cropped in when I use video on, on this camera. So I couldn't actually get the whole moon in shot. So I just got one section of the moon. Um, but I will put an image up on screen if I manage to work out how to split the, split the video and then stack the individual images. I'm not holding up much hope, but if I do get an image, I will put it up on screen now. So um, all I really need to do now is uh, wait for it to get dark um, and start collecting some images. So I will let you know and I'll show you the, the final shot at the end of the video. Okay, so a few people have asked how I go about taking the flats with this large telescope, and this is how I do it. So I point the telescope directly up at the meridian, um, then I have a t-shirt here over the front of the scope. So that is just a plain white t-shirt which has been ironed, um, so it is wrinkle free, that's just being held in place with an elastic band. And then on my iPad, I don't know if you can see that, I just have a an app which turns the screen completely white. So I place that on top of the telescope and this is pretty much my setup. So then I use my phone just to control my ASI Air and in that function 
it has an auto flats feature now which calculates the perfect exposure for for the flat frames now i have been using that and it tends to do quite a good job but you also um, try and calculate the the exposure time manually as well so i have a bit of a, a play with the exposure time um, i like to try and aim for an average adu of about 32 thousand somewhere between 25 and 35 thousand um, like I say the ASI Air does have an auto flats feature now which tends to work quite well one thing I would note which nearly cost me my iPad is the ASI Air app has a return to home function and a power down function after you finish your auto run so after you finish your image sequencing it tends to um, turn the the scope back to home position now i had this or i usually have this set uh, on when i'm collecting images overnight because i don't want the the scope to carry on tracking and run into the the tripod legs um, but for flats obviously after you take your flat frames it then tries to to spin back to home so i did that the first time and um, nearly lost the ipad off the top so just a quick word of warning if you're using the asi air for flats make sure you turn off the return to home function Okay, so that's how I go about taking my flat frames. Um, thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it. And thanks for anyone who's subscribed to my channel. Um, I, like I said before, I'm blown away by the support. So thank you all very much. Um, here's the image I managed to capture of the whale and the hockey stick galaxy. Do let me know your comments below. Um, I hope you like it.